Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the debt supremacy and the oath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems that the oaths really uh, don't believe that they are bound by oath or affirmation. Yes. And uh, those in the judiciaries of every state are not bound uh, thereby or anything of the Constitution. Yes. Or the laws of any state. Um, <laughs> but um, there was amendment number six. Yes. Mm -hmm. This unreasonable search and seizures, the number of times that you arrest me, shall not be violated. Yep. Yeah. And uh, supported by oath or affirmation, you said that it was issued according to the requirements of the VAWA. And <laughs> you did not need a search warrant uh, supported by oath or affirmation. <laughs> you could probable cause arrest me for the two-count criminal complaint in Squim, Washington on December 31st. <laughs> And then you could uh, arrest me for a failure to appear where you sent the notice of the court hearings to 1023 Kitchen Dick Road. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, mm -hmm. uh, this depriving me of life, liberty, or property without the penalty of perjury, without due process of law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. You know, when you decided to not obligate the petitioner to acknowledge receipt of the court order, yes, and you as the court decided that you didn't have to have due process, and I didn't have to get notice of court hearings, <laughs> you didn't have to have proof of service, you could just say a guy's crazy, he's homeless, and we as a court do not have to enforce the actual constitution of the United States. <laughs> We can really issue court orders yes, where there's no receipt of the actual petitioner. Yeah, yes. we could use forgeries. Yes. And um, you said, well, mm -hmm. uh, we can arrest you for being in Jefferson County that had previously been ascertained when I was in Clown County. Yes. Or we can arrest you for being in Squim where I was in Port Angeles on December 31st. Yes. And we have no obligation uh, to confront or allow you to confront the petitioner because she's the victim, even though she didn't acknowledge copy of the receipt of it. Mm -hmm. And as long as we uh, provide you a public defender, yes, a public defender that says you're mentally ill for thinking that <laughs> um, the actual petitioner has to acknowledge receipt of the court order so as to have the obligation of the law of contracts enforceable <laughs> so that every state of the United States would be able to sue her for the penalty of perjury, yes, as well as the United States federal government. <laughs> You know, I thought that maybe um, this cruel and unusual punishment being inflicted upon myself, yes. Well, the petitioner can say, well, I never said any of it was true. <laughs> In fact, I never acknowledged any of it. I wasn't even there when they issued it. They did it without my acknowledgement at all. <laughs> There's those people known as the citizens of the United States. Yes, that amendment number nine. I put initial and witness there. <laughs> Did you know you issued uh, a court order where there's not a citizen of the United States that could personally sue Heidi for the penalty of perjury <laughs> for them as the citizens, right? <laughs> um, knowing about her saying that I was 10 feet tall? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the citizens of the United States, it's, it's here in amendment number nine. The Reservation of Rights of the People. Mm -hmm. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights, yes, shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these people known as citizens, they might be upset with her. They thought, well, I'm going to sue myself for lying about what was actually in this court order. <laughs> and a lot of citizens of the United States, the approximate 350 million of them said, well, <laughs> she's an abusive mom. Yes. Mm -hmm. She did know they were having court hearings. Okay. <laughs> she did realize that Paul never got notice of it. And as a citizen of the United States, I'd personally like to sue her. <laughs> I mean, they're having court hearings. Yes. Where she did or did not motion the court to reissue the temporary protection order. <laughs> Couldn't be ex parte. It would have required her signature. <laughs> And then you had a court hearing 48 days later, and then you served me in the Squim Public Library. Yes. 
and a lot of people are upset at her. I mean, when you as a citizen have knowledge that the penalty of perjury is being violated, <laughs> I think there are some rights of citizens um, to uh, be able to sue those that they know are lying. Yes. Yes, yes. Some sort of reservation of the rights of the people. Yes. But you as a state and every state in the United States federal government, yes, you decided to um, deny and disparage uh, the rights of the people that are retained <laughs> because of the law of contracts. Now, it could be a trillion dollar day, okay, <laughs> depending on how we play this. Yes, <laughs> I could go through and say, well, <laughs> of every citizen of the United States that has knowledge, yes, that the court did not require the actual uh, re receipt of a copy of this order. Yes. Then, of course, there's that forgery. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then they issued this without the petitioner's name, date of birth. Yes. And they took my right to keep and bear arms away. And I'll talk about that a little later. But they didn't require her presented by, I acknowledge, receipt a copy of this order as the protected person. Two different individuals. One's a respond, no petitioner. One's a protected person. <laughs> but this signature is not the same as this signature. <laughs> How many citizens of the United States would feel that the government's refusal is to remove a uh, a court order has violated their rights as the people to sue a petitioner <coughs> for the knowledge that there is no penalty of perjury to herself. As the petitioner, she cannot be held liable for anything in this court order as being true and correct. Yes, as the protected person. She cannot be held liable. <laughs> now, all of these rights that are, um, well, reserved for the people that might get upset about this, mm -hmm. I would think as a citizen, if I had knowledge of any individual in this nation, having a court issue a court order that they do not have the penalty of perjury, they could, you know, I don't even know if she was there yes. as a protected person or the petitioner. <laughs> she could have lied her ass off. <laughs> And there's not a citizen in the United States that can sue her. <laughs> now, I know. <laughs> it could be a trillion dollar day, <laughs> depending on how I play this. <laughs> <laughs>